In this module, we're going to go over some core design decisions that you have to make pretty much for any lens you're going to make using a wave contact lens system. So most of these are the contact lens diameter, the tier layer mode, whether it be axial or tangential tier layer mode, the design mode you're going to use, and that is RSIM, GSIM, or freeform, and then as far as the actual design, the optic zone placement and the intermediate curve placement. These are the core design decisions that you're going to make, so let's look at each one individually now. As we go over the core design decisions when making a wave contact lens, we'll be using this corneal topography, and this is the default lens design that was opened up based upon this topography. So the first decision we'll make is the contact lens diameter. What I suggest doing is using the caliper within your topographer to measure the horizontal visible iris diameter. Now you notice in this case we don't have full access because the topography went off screen a little bit. But if we get a general idea here, I'm showing a measurement of about 11.78. And when I don't have full ability to get the horizontal, I will grab an oblique just again to give us an idea. So we're at about 12.2 there. So it's safe to assume this cornea is about a 12 millimeter and we can decide from there how large we want to make the contact lens. Some general rules you can follow when selecting your lens diameter is if the patient has previously worn gas perm lenses and was successful wear, you want to keep the diameter within a half a millimeter of the previous lens. For example, if they wore a 9.5 contact lens, you would not want to move them into an 11.0. You can move them up to a 10.0 or a 9.8 to keep their comfort level about the same. If you go too large, the lenses may be uncomfortable, or they could have difficulty handling them. So I'd recommend keeping their lens diameter within a half a millimeter of the previous lens. If they're a new lens wearer, I recommend keeping the lens within a half a millimeter to one and a half millimeters smaller than the horizontal visible iris diameter. So in this case, if we say we had a horizontal visible iris diameter of 12 millimeters, I would keep the lens anywhere between a 10.5 and 11.5 and that should give a good comfortable fit. The next design decision you'll want to make is whether you're going to use tangential tear layer mode or axial tear layer mode. As mentioned earlier, tangential will fit the lens just a little bit flatter and a little bit looser. Axial will design them just a little bit steeper and a little bit tighter. Since comfort is dictated by the edge, I tend to design most of my lenses in axial tear layer mode. So in selecting design mode, remember we'll have three options. We have RSIM, which is rotationally symmetric, GSIM, which is geometrically symmetric, and Freeform, which is completely asymmetric. Here I have three topographies up. Notice the one on the left is fairly symmetric cornea. This would be a good decision for an RSIM lens. The one in the middle is pretty classic with the rule of astigmatism. This would be a good choice for a GSIM design and the one all the way on the right is keratoconus. You'll notice this cornea is asymmetric, so this would be a good decision for a freeform style lens. Looking at this cornea, it appears to be a good candidate for an RSIM design contact lens. A good general rule of thumb is to spin the radial around and check each meridian to ensure we don't have too much edge lift in any one meridian. You'll notice the deviation between meridians stays within 15 to 20 microns. So an RSIM should be a fairly comfortable lens for this patient. The next step is to decide where your optic zone placement will be. The optic zone is controlled by this red control point and it's the back surface optic zone. It indicates where the central non-aspheric base curve will end. So if you're using asphericity, the placement of the optic zone is not as important, but it is still your control point. You want to place the optic zone within about a half a millimeter of the peripheral corneal flattening. And we'll get to that on a topography shortly. A larger optic zone usually leads to a looser lens. This is because the larger you make the optic zone, the larger that area of a non-aspheric curve is. So once we could pick up the aspheric curves, that's where the lens is going to align better on the peripheral cornea. So if you go too large, you have a much narrower area of aspheric curves. So if we look at this topography again, I always keep these rings up. This ring is a 3 millimeter ring, 5 millimeter ring, and a 7 millimeter ring. 
and it gives me a good reference point on where this peripheral cornea flattening begins. You'll find on most corneas it's right around the 6 millimeter area, so right in between this 5 and 7 millimeter. And I'm looking at where the lens, the general shape of the cornea coloring of the curvature map goes from green to blue, and that's right in this region. So once I've entered the appropriate diameter, then I will move this in to a 6.0 based upon this value here. And next we have the intermediate curve placement. So this is the blue control point. And I suggest you place this within a half a millimeter to one and a half millimeters of the optic zone on a normal cornea. Use it as a control point to adjust the peripheral alignment. So in our lens, this area between the blue and the pink dot is our peripheral alignment control. So if you place the IC out too wide and you want more peripheral alignment, you're not going to have a lot of space. If you bring it in closer towards the optic zone and you want to adjust it, you'll have a lot more room to do that. And now we'll put all of our core decisions together into this lens and see how simple it is to design the lens. So we'll keep the diameter at 10.7. We switch to axial tear layer mode. We place the optic zone at a 6.0. And I'll place the IC at a 6.5. Selected RSIM. Now I'm simply going to run Tools and Current Settings. Tools Current Settings essentially asks the software to align the, cornea, the contact lens to the cornea with the settings we've just implemented. And as it did that, our lens is almost complete. The final changes you'd want to make here are just to increase the center thickness so the lens will not flex on the eye, and then review the design to ensure it is satisfactory. And here we'll just take a moment to describe what makes a satisfactory lens design. Everyone has their own design philosophies. Remember this green line is showing us the corneal surface and the black line is showing us the tear layer clearance in relation to the cornea or the back surface of the contact lens. My main agenda when designing a contact lens is to create a very thin layer of tear layer clearance. So I want these two lines as close to each other as possible overall. And that usually it gives you a very well aligned contact lens. As you click down here, it shows you the amount of clearance. And on this particular design, it's showing us that we have pretty much less than one micron of clearance all the way across. So what this will actually give you on the eye is a lens that is very well aligned. It's going to be floating on a layer of tear. It's going to be very comfortable and very stable lens design. If you prefer a different style of design, you can alter that as you please. In this case, if I click down a few times under the blue dot and up a few times at the pink dot, you'll notice now we end up with a little more central clearance, a little mid peripheral touch, and a little higher edge lift. So based on your fitting philosophies, you have the ability to design the lens as you like.